We understand that the Bible is no ordinary book. The Bible is the Word of God. That means it is the book of record that was written by three witnesses. The first principle that we talked about concerning Bible study is based on this first and most fundamental truth. The Bible is multifaceted and multilayered because the three persons of the Godhead are speaking in the Bible at the same time, which is incredible when you think about it. It's this first truth that we call the first principle of biblical inspiration that literally defines what the Bible is. It explains why we call the Bible God's Word, and it is the ground floor of all biblical learning. This first principle of biblical inspiration divides the scriptures into three distinct levels or categories of learning. They are 1. The first lesson of history. 2. The second lesson of redemption. And 3. The third lesson of prophecy. The foundation of these three layers is, of course, the base of God's mountain of truth. The truth of history, which is our gift from the God the Father, is best defined here as the record of events and circumstances that have happened over a specific period of time. Time is a limitation that God has placed on this world and everything in it. Time is defined as a measurable period of circumstances or events that have a beginning, a middle, and an end. It makes perfect sense that God's plan to save the world is called history because it has a border or a limit. God's plan has to start somewhere and it has to end somewhere. The Bible says, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. Revelation 1 and verse 8. Since Jesus is the Father's gift to this world, and the Father's gift to us is the limitation of time, basic math says Jesus equals time. In Revelation 1 and verse 8, the Bible says that is exactly how Jesus defines who he is. The Father says Jesus has a physical limitation that's been placed upon him because Jesus is God's plan of salvation. He is the gift of time that the Father has given to us, and we will be held accountable for what we've done with our time. The first layer or ground level of biblical understanding that we have to climb when we open the Bible are the foothills of God's mountain of truth. Those foothills are the first lesson of history. In the scriptures, History is the record of things that God has chosen to record as history, which is telling us two things. The history of scripture is selective. God only records the history that serves his purpose because God has an agenda. God wants to save his children. If God wanted to write a book, we would have to read 66,000 Bibles, not 66 books. The history of scripture is always educational because it's always pointing to something greater than itself, which is the theme of redemption. We climb the mountain in order to get to higher ground. That's the point. Higher ground always affords us a better perspective on life and the things of this world. So we have no choice but to deal with the history of scripture. Some professed believers of the faith have maintained that they don't need to read the Old Testament. They only need the New Testament in order to be saved. That statement begs the question, who's in charge? Who is doing the saving? Is it me? Or is it God that is working within me? Each one of us will have to make that decision for ourselves. But if this analogy is valid, and God's word is the mountain of truth. There's just no way anyone can get to the higher elevation that is God's redemption 
without first climbing the foothills of history. That is the path that God has laid out for us to follow, and it's up to us to choose whether or not we will allow him to save us. It's not our place to tell God how to handle his business when he's the one that's doing the saving. We have to be careful to remember God's definition of history is different from ours because everything that's recorded in scripture has already happened from God's perspective. We're the ones who are having to live through whatever our time period is. The greatest characteristic of God's character is his humility. When you realize for the sake of our best good, God placed himself inside the time period of our history in order to convince us to take sides with him against the devil and the curse of sin. That's love. God says, once we learn what is his lesson of history, then the truth about his redemption will begin to emerge from that history. God gives us time to understand that his son Jesus is the word and the word is our redemption. The question is, what is redemption and how can we obtain it? What good did it do for me to live for 150 years if I don't understand that the wages of sin is death? God says redemption is being delivered from sin. It's that simple. Or so you would think. But it really isn't. Because it's been a real struggle for God to get us to the point where we realize just how deadly sin really is. Which is why we have the prophecy. The prophecy is God's plan to save us. As his plan is being fulfilled over a certain period of time. That means Jesus is the prophecy because he is the plan that was meant to save us. Remember, God's plan has a timeline that specifically mentions its beginning, its middle, and its end, which brings us to the next biblical principle that we'll need to discuss. That principle is called the principle of repetition and enlargement.